But I also caught up with Dr. Kristen Ruckos, who's the president of the World Bioenergy Association. And I began by asking about the bioenergy opportunity in India and where does India stand within that space on the map? Bioenergy is not a, bio, uh, a, a source of the past. Bioenergy is a source of the future. Uh, and that is uh, in line with what the International Energy Agency says. It says that bioenergy is going to be the second largest source of energy by 2050. So that's what we are looking at, the sector that has the importance of the coal sector today. So uh, globally, where do we stand in sense of number here and where do you see India therein? There is a lot of traditional biomass use in India and I think uh, that needs to change. There is opportunities to take uh, traditional bioenergy use to modern bioenergy use and that's the challenge and that's the opportunity at the same time. So are you looking at enough investments coming into the market or do you think the, that bioenergy also seems to be uh, competing with various other sources of energy? What I do see here is a lot of uh, fossil fuel en uh, energy industry, not too much renewable energy industry and that I would say is an indicator that there is still uh, a place for improvement. When you look at India, would you, do you see policy supportive of uh, uh, you know, bioenergy going forward? Absolutely. In it, uh, India has very supportive policies in the field of biofuels. Mm. Uh, it has interesting uh, political provisions also for solid biomass. I'm thinking of the co-firing uh, uh, in, in coal-fired power plants. But the fact is that there is very slow progress in developing the supply chains for that purpose. Mm. So that needs to accelerate. Mm. So supply chains, you also mean infrastructure that is and modernizing it. So innovation, technology, are they, are they being worked upon as well? Innovation and technology, to be honest, it's there. Mm. The technology is there. It's the deployment that is still uh, uh, missing and that needs to accelerate. So when you look at the spend on ensuring that it is implemented, uh, how much would you say has come into the markets already? So if you compare to the last five years to where we stand right now in the next five years, what is the kind of growth that would need to be seen in spend to ensure that we get those numbers right? I think there was a great progress in liquid biofuels in the last couple of years, really a ramp up that is impressive. If you manage to create that similar ramp up when it comes to solid biofuels, using agricultural residues, for example, densifying them to pellets and making them available as fuel, then you are on the right track. Mm -hmm. Kristen, would you say that we all the time, when we talk about decarbonization or, uh, or bioenergy, it mostly is about uh, uh, you know, renewables and not so much about agriculture. Uh, that is what needs to be really pushed on, especially for a country like India, which is clearly agrarian. Uh, India has an incredibly large potential in using agricultural residues. Mm -hmm. But it's also a challenge. Uh, they need to be collected, they need to be processed, there needs to be investment in these processing facilities, uh, there needs to be know-how that is av made available. That's also one of the tasks of the World Bioenergy Association, to provide know-how, to co uh, provide international cooperation. All right, those are the top voices at INW telling us on the fine balance that the government policies seem to be creating within the fossil fuels and, of course, uh, the energy transition on whether it's about hydrogen, green hydrogen, that is, and bioenergies and biogas, etc. But with that, we're heading into a very short break. When we come back, we get to some more top voices on the energy energy in India.